Today's video is on the top 5 weird ancient weapons. Number 5. Hand Cannon Firearms are some of the most common weapons in the world now, but while you may think they were only developed relatively recently, the oldest known surviving ones dates from as far back as 1288. Known as the Hyangjang Hand Cannon, it's 13.4 inches long, made from bronze, and weighs just under 8 pounds. It was discovered during an archaeological dig in the village of Banlakchenzi, which is in the Chinese province of Hyangjang in Manchuria. The lightweight and portable design means that it was likely carried on the backs of the soldiers from the Yuan dynasty, probably in battles that took place nearby in 1287 and 1288. Records that survive from the time detail a group of soldiers entering a military camp in 1283, each of whom was equipped with these weapons. Which suggests that rather than being something only the most important warriors would carry, hand cannons like these were regular issue. They would have given a significant advantage in time when swords and other extremely heavy gunpowder-based weapons were more common, and go some way to explain why the Huan Dynasty was so powerful. Number 4. Sodgarami In feudal Japan, only samurai were allowed to kill other samurai, so this posed a problem for law enforcement, because how could you capture one without the risk of causing them harm? The answer was the sogarami. Even though this looks like a pole with a nasty pointed end to impale people on, the intended use was far more clever. It was also known as the Sleeve Entangler and was used by samurai police during the Edo period, at some point between 1603 and 1868. It's six feet long, and on the end are a series of triangle-shaped hooks that face in different directions. Based on naval designs to deter pirates, it was pushed into the kimono of the person they were trying to capture and twisted. This wrapped the clothing up and prevented them from being able to escape, no matter how much they struggled. It was then possible to disarm them and take them into custody. It was a time of peace in Japan, so non-lethal weapons like this had to be developed to prevent unnecessary bloodshed. It could take two or even three people brandishing sogarami to finally subdue someone, depending on how strong and skilled they were, but it was much more preferable to other, more deadly solutions. Number 3. Atlat The Atlat was a weapon used by spear throwers in Europe during the Upper Paleolithic period around 17,000 years ago. Instead of the handheld spears that were used before its development, this one gave its holders a much greater speed, distance, and accuracy, as well as being a lot safer because they didn't need to be close to their targets. They were made from carved pieces of wood, or occasionally ivory or bone, and come in a range of sizes. The ones that have been found are between 5 and 24 inches long and are up to 3 inches thick. On one end of the spear was a hook that fits into a separate spear shaft, which itself could be up to 8 feet long. This allows the user to hold the spear steady behind them and to thrust it forward with a lever system that gave pinpoint accuracy. Modern-day tests have shown that spears could travel up to 78 miles per hour and could be powerful enough to pierce thin sheets of metal, so it would have been deadly against prey. Atlats were depicted in cave art that's been found across France, and they were themselves ornamentally decorated. Often they were carved with shapes and objects into the wood, and some were painted with various symbols. Despite being such an ancient weapon, Atlats are still used today, in competition. The World Atlat Association organizes events for both experts and amateurs, so if it looks like something you want to try, why not give it a go? Number 2. Yurumi With the name that translates to mean curling blade, the Yurumi is a weapon that originated in southern India during the Morain dynasty, which covered the period of time between the 4th and 2nd centuries BC. It's similar to a sword, but the metal blade is flexible, so it is used more like a whip. If used by an expert, this is an extremely deadly weapon, but it can also be as dangerous towards those wielding it as it is towards their enemies. Typically, Yurami blades were up to six feet long and were attached at the end to a handle that had a thumb and knuckle guard built in. The blade could be rolled up, which made it easily portable and concealable, and was even worn as a belt. There were a number of different variations of design too. Some blades were much longer, up to 17 feet, and multiple blades were often attached to the same handle. One example that was found was made with 32 blades and would have been incredibly difficult to master, but equally as lethal. 
The thin metal and bendy nature of the blades means that this weapon was not designed for stabbing an enemy, but instead was used to slash at them. Those who were properly trained would keep the weapon in constant motion by swinging them over their shoulder, so it was a continuous attack. This gave more risk to the person using the weapon, but had a number of benefits, such as creating a protective bubble around them that was difficult to approach within. And the weapon was also able to wrap around a shield and hit anyone hiding behind it. As newer weapon designs became more commonplace on the battlefield, Urumis fell out of fashion. But some people continue to train in the techniques today. There are two Indian martial arts, Kalari Payatu and Salambam, which originated in southern India, and both teach proper use of the weapon. Number 1. Nest of Bees Chinese warriors were the first to use weaponized gunpowder, with the earliest examples dating back to at least the 9th century. One type that was popular were known as fire arrows, or divine engine arrows, which were made of attaching a bag containing gunpowder to a traditional design arrow. Launched by a bow, it would hit a target and set fire to it. The problem, though, is that these weren't very accurate because of the extra weight the gunpowder added. So to ensure a high chance of hitting a target, the nest of bees was created. This was essentially a long-range rocket battery that contained 32 fire arrows within it. The device was made up of a series of hexagonal tubes that contained the arrow and were set at angles to each other to create as wide an area of effect as possible. Again, this method wasn't perfectly accurate, but it significantly increased the chance of hitting the target or causing damage over a large space. The arrows, as well as being packed with gunpowder, were also tipped with poison and sometimes were covered in bitumen or resin, which made them far more lethal and made it all the more likely that the target would be set on fire. The nest of bees was a commonly used weapon during the Ming Dynasty and are thought to have been developed in the 11th century. They had to be held by two hands, so it put the user at a disadvantage, so battlefield techniques were developed to protect them while they were firing the device. Furthermore, if they don't already sound dangerous enough, there were also several variations. A much larger version, known as the Divine Fire Arrow Shield, was used in special situations, and some were constructed with timed fuses so multiple rounds could be fired simultaneously. The use of weapons like this and others that used gunpowder would have had a major effect on the battlefield against enemies who didn't have access to such advances. The smoke, fire, noise, and vicious injuries they inflicted ensured the Chinese warriors had the edge in every battle they took part in. Honorable Mentions Zhuo. This strange weapon, the Zhuo, was used during the Eastern Zhu period of ancient China and was used by fighters under the command of Sun Tzu. It was designed as a mid-range weapon and was made up of claw iron hands on the end of a staff. It weighed 18 pounds, was 6 feet long, and had counterweights in the base to allow for easier control and also double up as a club if it was turned around. The sharp claws were very useful on the battlefield, as they could grip around the enemy's shield and tear it away from them. They could also be used to pull riders from their horses and, once an enemy's defenses were down, could inflict serious damage by slashing at them. Replicas of the weapon have been found to be weighted enough to break and pull apart the bone of a skull and in the right hands would have turned the tide on any battlefield. Wahayaka The Wahayaka was a short club used by Maori warriors who often engaged in fierce battles with one another to take control of disputed territory. Made from whalebone or wood, it had a groove in it that was used to trap the weapon being used by an enemy and in a singular motion could be used to disarm them. It would then be used in a jabbing motion, and because of its weighty and solid design, it could break bones and cause significant injury to internal organs. The word wahayaka translates to mean the mouth of the fish, and they were usually carved with patterns and motifs on them in honor of the people's spiritual heritage. Anyone facing a large group of Maori wielding these weapons would struggle to come out victorious and when losing meant being eaten or having your head shrunk to be kept as a trophy, most choose to simply avoid confrontation altogether.
I hope you all enjoyed today's video narrated by Zach this time. Be sure to subscribe for more and check out some of our recent uploads.